from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Imagine. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown Seattle at the AWS Imagine EDU event. It's a small conference, it's the second year, but it'll grow like a weed like everything else does at AWS. And it's all about Amazon and AWS for education. And that's everything from K through 12, community college, higher education, uh, retraining vets coming out of the service. It's a really big area and we're really excited to have fresh off his keynote presentations where he changed his title on me from uh, what it was this morning to what it was <laughs> <laughs> this afternoon, he's David Raymond, the director of what was the Virginia Cyber Range and now is the U.S. Cyber Range at Virginia Tech. David, great to see you. Yeah, thank you, thanks. So the Virginia Cyber Range actually will continue to exist in its current form. Okay. We'll, it'll still serve faculty and students in the, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, funded by the state of Virginia. Now the U.S. Cyber Range will, fund, will uh, um, provide service to folks outside of Virginia. So we jumped ahead, so, so let's back up a step. What sure. is the Virginia Cyber Range? So the Virginia Cyber Range provides courseware and infrastructure so students can do hands-on cybersecurity educational activities uh, in Virginia high schools and colleges. So funded by the state of Virginia and um, provides this service at no charge to the schools. And even in high school? Even in high school, yes. So now that there are now cybersecurity courses in the Virginia Department of Education course catalog as of two years ago. And um, I mean, they've grown like wildfire. I'm just curious, so A, you know, a ton of talk here about skills gap, and there's tremendous skills gap. Even the machines right. are going to take everybody's job, there's a whole lot of jobs <laughs> that aren't fulfilled out there. But what's interesting, I mean, it's the high school angle is really weird. I mean, how do you, most high school kids haven't even kind of clued into privacy and security and opting in and opting out. It's got to be a really interesting conversation when now you bring security into that, a potential career into that and directly reflects on all those things that you do on your phone. Well, I, I would argue that that's exactly the problem. Students are not exposed to cybersecurity. Uh, you know, they don't know what the career potentials are. They really don't understand what it is. You know, we talk about we talk about teenagers being digital natives. Really, they know how to use smartphones, they know how to use computers, but they don't understand how they work, and they don't understand the security aspects that go along with using all this technology. And uh, I would argue that by the time a student gets into college, they have a plan, right? So I have a student in college, he's, a, he, he's going to be a doctor, he knows what a doctor is, he's heard of that his whole life, and in high school he was able to get certified as a uh, um, nursing assistant. We need cybersecurity in that same realm, right? If we start students in high school and we, and we expose them to cybersecurity courses, they're all elective courses, um, the, the, some of the students will latch onto it and they'll say, hey, this is what I want to be when I grow up. And, and in Virginia, we have, we have this dearth of cybersecurity expertise, and this is true across the country. In Virginia right now, we have over 30,000 cybersecurity jobs that are unfilled. That's about a third of the cybersecurity jobs in the state. And I mean, that's a serious problem, not only in Virginia, but nationwide. And, and one of the ways to fix that is to get high school students exposed to cybersecurity classes, right. give them some real hands-on opportunities so they're really doing it, not just learning the words and, and you know, passing the test. And um, I mean, really, uh, again, in Virginia, this is this has grown like wildfire and um, we really think it's revolutionized cybersecurity education in the state. And, and what are some of the topics at, say, a high school level where you know, you're kind of getting versed on the vocabulary and the terminology versus when they go into, into college and start to take those types of courses? Yeah, so in Virginia, there's actually cybersecurity courses across the CTE career pathways. And so CTE is the Career and Technical Education Curricula. And so there are courses like uh, cybersecurity and healthcare, where students learn about personal health data and how to secure that specific, those specific kinds of data. They learn about the regulations be behind that data. There's healthcare in manufacturing where students learn about um, uh, industrial control systems and, and you know, how those things need to be secured and how they're different from a laptop or a phone and the way those are secured. And what feeds into all of those courses is an introductory course, Cybersecurity Fundamentals, where students learn some of the very basics, they learn the terminology, they learn things like the CIA triad, right? Confidentiality, integrity, and, and availability are the three basic components of security that you try to maintain for any system. So they start out learning the basics, uh, but still they're doing that hands-on, so they're, so they're in a network environment where they see that, you know, that, 
later on in the course during capstone exercises, they might see um, someone trying to attack a computer that they're that they're tasked to defend. And um, you know, if, as a as a defender, what does that look like? What are the things that I'm going to do to that computer? You know, I might install antivirus. I might have a firewall on the, on the computer. And how do I set that up? And et cetera, et cetera. So, high school start with the basics. As as students progress through their high school years, there are opportunities to take further, more advanced classes in the high schools. And then when they get to college, some of those students are going to have latched on to cybersecurity as a potential career field. And now, you know, now we've got them right. We can right, we can right. get them into the right into the right um, majors and into the right courses. And our hope is that that's going to sort of kickstart this pipeline of students um, in Virginia colleges. Right. And then I wonder if you could. Talk a little bit about the support at the state level. I mean, it's pretty interesting that you had it from the state level. We heard earlier today about support at the state level, and yeah. I think it was Louisiana uh, for for another big initiative. So, you know, the, the fact that the governor and the legislature are basically branding this at the state level, not the individual school district level, yeah. is a pretty strong statement of the prioritization that they're putting on this. Thing. That that has been critical to our success. If we didn't have state level support. Um, significant state level support there's no way we could be where we are so uh, the, the the previous governor of Virginia Terry McAuliffe he latched on to cybersecurity education as one of his signature initiatives in fact he was the president of the uh, State Governors Association and in that role he, he, he cybersecurity was one of his key initiatives so so he felt strongly about educating uh, uh, K-12, educating college students, feeding that cybersecurity pipeline. Um, and the Cyber Range was one of, a, one of a handful of different initiatives. So there were veteran scholarships and there were some community college scholarships and, and other, other initiatives. Um, some of those are still ongoing, some of them are, are not, but, but um, the Cyber Range has been very successful, funded by the state, provides a service at no cost to high schools and colleges, and, and that's been critical. Right. So, I can't help, we were at RSA earlier this year, and I'm just thinking of all the CEOs that I was sitting with uh, over the course of, of yeah, a couple of days right. that are probably uh, looking for your phone number right now. We might have to make an introduction, <laughs> but I'm curious, are, are the, the companies, the security companies, I mean, RSA is a huge show, Amazon just had their first ever security conference, I mean, there's a lot lot of money uh, being invested in this space. Are they behind it? Have you have you looked for you know kind of private company participation to help because they desperately yeah. need these employees? Yeah, definitely. So we've just started down that road, really. I mean, our state funding has has kept us strong to this point, uh, and our state funding is is going to continue into the foreseeable future. But you're right, there are definitely opportunities to work with industry. Uh, certainly AWS has been a very strong partner of ours since the very beginning. They really, I, I mean, without without the help of some of, the, some of their uh, cloud architects and other technical folks, we, we, we could not have built what we built in, in the AWS cloud. Right. Um, uh, we, we've also been talking to Palo Alto about using some of their virtual appliances in our uh, network environments. Um, so, the, yeah, so, so we're, we're definitely going down the road of, of industry partnerships, right. and that, that will continue to grow, I'm sure. So then fast forward today to the keynote and, and your, your announcement that now you've taken it beyond just Virginia. So now right. it's the U.S. cyber range. How did that come about, or come about? what does that mean? Yeah, so we've been we've been sharing the story of the Virginia Cyber Range for the last couple of years, and and uh, I go to national conferences and talk about it, and um, just to just to sort of inform other states, other other school systems, what Virginia is doing, how could you how could you potentially match uh, what we're doing, and and what the question that I keep getting is, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. How can I buy what you have, and. Um, that's been a sort of a, a constant drumbeat over the last couple of years. So we decided um, fairly early on that we might want to try to expand beyond Virginia. Um, that w and uh, it just sort of the conditions were right about six months ago. So we set a mark on the wall. We said in summer of 2019, we're going to make this available to folks outside of Virginia. And um, so, the, so again, the Virginia Cyber Range will still exist, funded by the Commonwealth of Virginia. The U.S. Cyber Range is still part of Virginia Tech, so we're within Virginia Tech. Um, but we will have to we will have to essentially recoup our costs. So we'll have to spend money on cloud infrastructure, and we'll have to spend salary money on folks who support this effort. And so we'll, we'll recoup costs from folks that are outside of Virginia using our service. But um, we think the cost is going to be very competitive compared to, to similar efforts, and um, we're looking forward to some successes here. And, and do you think your your kind of breakthrough will be at the high school level? The the 
you know, the, the mm -hmm. undergrad level? You know, where do you kind of see the opportunity? Because you've got the whole thing covered with state support <laughs> in Virginia. Yeah. How does that get started in California? How does that get started here yeah, that's in a Washington great, State? That's a great question. Uh, so we, really, when we started this, I thought we were building a thing for higher ed. That's my experience. I've been teaching cybersecurity in higher ed for several years, and I knew I, I knew what I would want if I was using it, and I do use it. So I teach class at, at Virginia Tech um, in the graduate ECE program, and I, so I, I use the Virginia Cyber Range in my class. And um, what has what has happened is that the the high schools have latched onto this, as I mentioned, and most of our users are high schools in Virginia. We have 180 Virginia high schools using the Virginia Cyber Range. That's, also, that's almost 180 half, high schools. 180, that's almost half the high schools in the state using the Virginia Cyber Range. So we think, and, and if you think about, you know, higher ed has been teaching cybersecurity classes. The, the faculty members who have been teaching them, a lot of them have set up their own network infrastructure. They have it set up the way they want it, and it ties into their existing courseware, and you know, they're gonna use that at least for now. Um, what we provide is, is something that makes it so that a high school or a community college doesn't have to figure out how to fund or figure out how to actually put this network architecture together. Right. They just come to us, they have the flexibility to, the flexibility to use just our, our very basic plug and play network environments, or they have flexibility to um, make modifications depending on, on how sophisticated they themselves are with, with uh, you know, manipulating systems and manipulating the network. Um, so so uh, our expectation is that the biggest growth is going to be in the high school market. Right, that's great. Because when you say cyber range, now it finally dawned on me, it's like a target range, it's like a place to go practice. It's where the name comes from, right, right. absolutely. Okay. If I finally like, oh, okay, I get it. So, because it's not only the curriculum and the courseware and everything else, but it's actually an environment in which on. to stage things and do right. things exactly. and practice things. So students can do offensive, offensive and defensive cybersecurity activities. And you know, so, so early on when we were teaching students how to hack essentially um, in colleges, we, you know, th there were people who were concerned about that. And the military uh, um, case we make for that is you, you can't teach somebody how to defend unless they understand how they're going to be attacked. Right. And the same is true in this case. So. All of our all of our courseware has lots of uh, ethics and and you know other you know legal and and uh, other other discussions embedded throughout, so students understand the implications of what their actions would be if they do it somewhere else. And um, the, right, these are all isolated network environments. They're places where students can get hands on in a place where they can essentially do whatever they want without causing trouble on the school network or on the internet. And um, it, it's very much akin to a rifle range. Right, and like you said, you can have different scenarios. And I, I would imagine there's probably going to be competitions if you think back to you know, what's going on in the robotics world. Yeah, we support and, lots and, and of competitions. All these yeah. things, right? right? It's like white sure. hat, black hat uh, hacker. Well, very, very exciting, David. Yes. Congratulations, and uh, sounds like you're well on your way. Thanks, great. Oh. All right, he's David, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We are at Washington State Convention Center just across the street at AWS Imagine. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Thanks.